Hello everybody, this is John from pythonbeginners.com welcoming you to my first lesson in Python Essentials. If you're watching this on YouTube, Python Beginners is a website I started for people who want to learn more about Python and haven't had a lot of background in programming. So I've divided it into three areas and I'll have a video series on each one of these. But for this particular series, we're talking about Python Essentials and the first lesson is on variables. So we'll just click here. And this is the menu of the different topics that I'm going to cover in Python Essentials, starting with the variables here. And I'm going to use my website here to help me cover the topic. And I'll also be switching back and forth between live code views and uh, the content of the site. So we'll start with variables. Variables is the first lesson of almost any uh, programming course in any language because it's such an important first thing to understand. So let me just click on this and I'll use my website to help me go over some important points here. So the first thing I want to zero in on is this quote here. A variable is a storage location that is given a name and can store information while the program is running. The information it stores can also change while the program is running. So if you're writing a program and you want to keep track of some information, then you definitely need a variable to do that. So here's some examples of variables that you can declare in Python. So all you have to do is give the variable a name and set it equal to something. And it can't be any easier than that. Some languages you have to be more specific about the kind of variable it is. But Python is smart enough to know when it looks at what you've set the variable equal to, it knows what kind of variable it's going to be. So I've got price equals 29.99. That's a number with decimals. I've got item equals shirt. So that's a word variable storing the name of something with quotes around the word, like shirt. I've got how many, which is equal to two, which is a whole number. And then I've got a variable called total cost, which instead of assigning it to an actual value, I'm assigning it to a calculation. In Python, we'll take a look at the variables, price and how many, and the, the values that are stored in there, and it'll multiply them together to give me the answer for total cost. So this example here illustrates the three main types of variables that Python works with. So here's a little chart that shows you those three types. So there's int, which is a positive or negative whole number. Okay, like for example, how many equals two. A float is a positive or negative number with decimals. Okay, for example, price, 29.99. And then there's a string, which is a letter, word, or multiple words, anything with quotes around it, such as item equals t-shirt. Okay, so here's some more examples of working with variables if I go down the page a little bit. Um, I can say something like x equals 7, I can say y equals a calculation, x times 2, so that'll make y 14. I can say z equals x times 0 0.5, which would make x, or sorry, z 3.5. So you can use calculations for those types of things. Another handy feature that Python has is using the type command. So if I say type and I put the name of a variable in brackets, it'll come back and tell me what type of variable it is. I think I'll show you this from the live point of view. So in my Python shell here, where I can just sort of play around and add some variables and see what they do, um, I'm going to create a variable called x, and I'm going to set x equal to 10. So if I go type x, it's going to tell me that x is an integer, meaning it's a whole number. But I can also reassign x to something else, like maybe the name of somebody like Bob. So now if I go type x, it's going to say class str, meaning that x is a string. I can also reassign it again to a number with decimals. And if I say, what is x, I can just type x, and it'll echo it back to me. And then, of course, I can go type x, and it'll tell me that it is a float. So unlike other languages, Python's really flexible. Like If you have a variable and you assign it to something like a value of 10, you can later decide to reassign it to something completely different, and Python's OK with that. So another common thing that people do with variables is they use the input command to assign data to a variable. Okay, so check out this line here. Item equals input. Enter the name of the item you bought. So let me try that in a live view here in, uh, in idle. So if I say item equals input, enter the name of the item. Okay, and if I press enter on that, that line of code is going to execute right in the Python shell. And it's going to ask me to enter the name of the item. So I'm going to say uh, skateboard and press enter. So what just happened was what I just typed in as the answer to the question, skateboard, became what item is equal to. And I can verify that if I just type item, it comes back as skateboard. Okay, now one thing about the input command, though, is that it always re returns or sends back 
a word. So if I say age equals input, how old are you? So I'm asking somebody what their age is. And that'll work okay. And I can say, you know, 27. And that's fine. If I type age, though, watch what happens. Age comes back not as the number 27, but as quote 27. Okay, so that treats it like it's a string. In fact, if I go type age, you'll see that it is a string. Okay? Now, if I want to convert that to a number, not a problem. I can go like this. Age equals int age. Okay, and that's going to intify or change it from one type to another. So now if I type age, you can see that it is in fact a 27, and type age also gives me back an int. Okay, now typically what you're going to see with the input command is a lot of times people will convert it to an int or a float as they ask for the value. So let me try that with price. I'm going to say price equals as a float an input command. So it's like a input inside of a float. So enter the price. Okay, and then I have to close off the brackets. Okay, so enter the price with two brackets at the end there. And if I press enter, it'll execute this and I'll say the price is $19.99. Okay, because I converted it to a float on the fly, if I type price, it'll indeed become a float right off the bat. I can also go type price and it will also be a float. Okay, say I want to calculate tax on that. So I can go tax equals the price times, and depending on the tax rate where you live, let's just say we have a tax rate of 7%. So I'm going to go 0 0.07. Okay, so now if I echo back the tax, I get this value here. Now, obviously, that needs to be rounded off to two decimals for, for money purposes. So I can go like this, tax equals round tax comma two. So that's going to round off tax to two decimal places. Now if I say tax, it's it's two decimals, but it's a dollar forty, which it does truncate the last zero, but that basically works the same. It's a basically a dollar forty in terms of money. Okay, so round is a handy uh, tool to use to round off numbers to two decimals. You can also round it off to zero or any number of decimals that you want to. Okay, so if you look at the example on the website, I'm doing something very similar here. And in this case here, I'm asking for the price and I'm converting it to a float as a separate line. Okay, so you can do that as well. So um, let me just show you that really quickly here. So if I say item equals input, what are you buying? Question mark. Okay, and so I'm going to buy a shirt. Okay, then I'm going to say price equals input what is the cost of the now watch this I'm going to close off that part of the sentence and I'm going to say plus the variable item and then plus a question mark okay so watch what happens when I press enter what is the cost of the shirt so I inserted the variable right in the middle of the sentence using these pluses here okay so I'm going to say I don't know $12.99 okay so now if I echo back the price I get $12.99 now, of course, it's still a, fl uh, a string, so I have to go price equals float price to convert it to a float, okay? So um, if you typed out this information here, let me just copy this into a program. So for those that don't know much about Python, you can also create a Python program. So if I just go uh, file new, I'm going to get a window over here. And so rather than just typing at the, at the Python prompt, I can actually type a program up here. So I'm going to take the code that's on this website and copy it, and I'm going to paste it into my program here, and we're just going to run it. Okay, so um, I'll just paste. Okay, so there's the code from the website. And if I run it, which is just pressing the F5 key, okay, and it's going to ask me to save it first of all. So I'll just go ahead and save it. So I'll, cal I'll call it calculate.py, I'll save it on my desktop, and before I run it, I noticed here that I actually uh, copied it and pasted it twice. So let me just get rid of the second copy of this, and I'll try that again and save it. Okay, so it's going to come back to the idle shell and enter the name of the item you bought. So I bought a frog. Enter the price of the frog, $2.99. How many did you buy? Five. 
your total is 1495 okay and I could have probably rounded that off to get rid of the extra decimal places here okay so you can see here how that program works so I'm, I'm asking for item and price because price is a float I'm gonna use another line to convert it to a float and then I'm gonna use int to convert all on the same line how many okay so I'm just gonna put this right in here and I'm gonna calculate the total and then I'm gonna print the total so to print you simply just say print your total is and then follow by the variable total and you can see here that we got that exact output right down here now again if I wanted to get rid of these extra decimals I could probably round that so I'm gonna just add that right now I'm gonna say round total to two decimal places and then add a comma a bracket there and I'm gonna run it one more time and this time around I'm going to buy a, another shirt and the price of the shirt is uh, $19.99 a cheap shirt and I bought four of them because they were on sale and the total is $79.96 so you can see how it rounds it off to two decimal places okay um, let's take a look at another program that's on my website I'm just gonna copy and paste this into my code editor which is right here so let me just replace this program with this other one and you can take a look and see how this works so in this one here I'm asking what your average or I'm calculating rather what your average speed was so take a look at how this one plays itself out so on the first line I'm asking for distance as an input so I'm saying distance equals an integer input how many miles did you drive on the next line I'm saying how many hours did it take you to drive the distance that you drove now look at how I've injected distance into this input statement and this is where it gets a little bit confusing um, because distance is a number I have to put str around it to convert it to string because the input command only is allowed to have you use strings as part of the question so if I'm going to inject a number in between here I've got a break from the sentence use the plus and then convert it to a string and then go plus back to miles the other thing you're going to see notice here is that I also put an extra space before the distance and after the distance so when I go to run this there's going to be a nice little space between the number and between the words in the rest of the sentence so on the next line I'm just calculating the speed which is basically distance divided by um, hours to two decimal places and then I print your average speed was speed miles per hour notice that in print statements when you inject variables they're a lot easier to do than in input statements again with input statements if it's a number you gotta convert it to a string you gotta use the plus to, to inject it into the sentence you gotta use spaces on either side so that it spaces itself out with a print statement it's much more straightforward with a print statement all you need are commas and you don't need to convert them to strings and the spaces are taken care of automatically by the print statement all right let me run this and you'll see how all of this code plays out so I'm just going to press F5 which is how you run and I'll say OK to save so if you take a look down here in the idle prompt uh, how many miles did you drive I say I drove 300 miles how many hours did it take it took me 6.5 hours so your average speed was 46.15 miles per hour okay and so it works out exactly the way that um, I programmed it over here so we're going to finish this lesson looking at randomness and adding or subtracting from the value of the variable so I will start by taking this program here and copying it into my idle code editor and I'll replace the old program with this one and we'll just take a look at this in more detail so if you're going to use random numbers the first thing you have to do at the very top of your program is import random as r so later on in the program when you want to use a random number you say r dot rand int and if I say it like this with 10 comma 20 what I'm saying is give me a random number between 10 and 20 and I'm assigning that to the variable treasure okay so if I inject that into the rest of my code here's what I have I start with score at 0 I'm giving score a starting value of 0 if I want to increase from there I use plus equals so plus equals is used to increase the value that's already stored in a variable now if I don't have this 
here at the beginning. So if I delete this, I'm going to have an error because Python's going to say, I don't know what to, what to increase score from. So I need to have a starting from value for it to increase by 10 to. Okay, so I'm just going to put that back in there so that's not going to throw an error. So here's my print statement, and I can easily inject score. I don't even need a space there. Um, I can inject score right in the middle of my print statement, so it'll say you now have 10 points, but you are about to fight a monster. So to take away from a variable, instead of plus equals, it's minus equals, and this will reduce score by 5. And then while I'm at it, I'm going to get a random amount of treasure. But before I apply the treasure, I'm first going to print what my current score is, which will be 5, because it was 0, went up to 10, went down by 5, so now I have five points, and I just found a treasure and earned treasure points. So on the line before, treasure is a random number from 10 to 20. I'm going to print it as part of this print statement here, so that I know up front how many treasure points I've got. So now to add those to the score, I say plus equals again to increase score by the treasure amount, and then I'm going to print my final score is, and then whatever that happens to be. Now I admit this isn't a very exciting program, but it's a great program to illustrate uh, how to use plus equals, minus equals, how to use random numbers, um, and an idle, another final review of how to inject variables inside of print statements. Okay, so if I run this one time, you'll see the uh, result of this. So I'll press F5 and save, and I'll switch back here to the idle view window, and it'll just quickly output all of the results. Okay, so I had 10 points, and then I went down to 5, and it looks like, oh, I earned 20 points in my random, which brings me back up to 25. Okay, so this is just a, a very beginning start primer on variables, but variables are the kind of thing that you're going to use in all kinds of programs as you learn more topics uh, about Python. Variables will come up in all of them. Okay, so that's it for this lesson. Um, one more thing I want to leave you with. If you do go to the slideshow, or sorry, to the website, you'll notice at the bottom there is also a slideshow that you can also go through to review um, variables again, and it's sort of the same lesson. I actually teach Python in a live classroom, so I, I put the uh, slideshows on here as well just to uh, give you another resource that you can read through with some more examples as well. So uh, thanks for watching, and in the next lesson, we are going to talk about lists.